So we are in the next lecture of stiffness. Uh, in this, let's take this problem and try to obtain the stiffness matrix for this beam. Uh, as you can see, in this problem, already the coordinates are given. So uh, the, the degrees of freedom, the, redund the redundant degrees of freedom were identified and they were assigned coordinates as 1, 2, 3 and 4 where 1 would be a displacement, 2 would be a rotation. So we are already in the second step. Now what is the third step of surface method? You restrain the structure. So when you restrain it, how you restrain it? You restrain it by making it fix here, here and here. So this is how you restrain And what is your coordinates? Again I am just writing down here. 1, 2, 3 and 4. So that is your third step over. The next step is to apply displacements one by one at each coordinate. So let's do that. So for that, uh, I'll just make a table here. Uh, sorry, the matrix here. Like in flexibility, we had a four by four matrix. Here also, we will have a four by four matrix. So now let's try to calculate each term in the matrix. So first, I apply unit displacement. at 1. So your 1 is a direction, that's a translation. So your displacement diagram would be like this. So I have given, uh, see these are like theoretical way of explaining the problem. However, this displacement won't occur, but uh, I am assuming this to be delta equal to 1. If this is delta equal to 1, you have delta equal to 1, then uh, what will be your k11? See, when the far end is fixed and the near end is given displacement, what is the formula we have seen? We have seen 12ei delta by l cube. If you remember this p was 12ei by delta by l cube. If, if I take delta here, what is p by delta? p by delta is what is P by delta? P by delta is K. So I can write K as 12 EI by LQ. So that's what that's K, that's what K is. So I'll write K11 as so see this end is 2 meter and this end is 3 meter. So you have 12 EI upon 2 Q plus that side also. So I'll just put arrow here. This is your K11. So 12 EI upon 3 Q. So when you solve this, you get, so it's a uniform line, so 12 by 2 cube, it's not 23, it's 2 cube, plus 12 by 3 cube. So you got 1.944 upon EI. Sorry, 1.944 EI. So I'll just put EI outside, and here I'll put the first value is 9.44. 1.944. Then you have next is k12. I'll just erase this line so that it's more clear. So when you have a displacement in downward direction, you will in order to rotate it back, your rotation would be like this. Right? Your rotation will be since the beam is rotating like this and the beam should not have any rotation, rotation value. It's giving a displacement without rotation. So this rotation should not exist. In order to restrain this rotation, there will be an opposite moment generated that should bring the beam back to horizontal. So for that, we have seen that this value will be equal to 6EI upon 2 square. Now what is the sign? It's minus here. So the sign for this is minus. And sign for this will be, so this is anti clock and this is clock. So this side will be plus. So 6EI upon 3 square, right? So this is K12. See the notation is still same. K11 means what is the displacement at 1 when, sorry, what is the force at 1 when of 1 dis displacement is given at 1. Whereas K12 is when displacement is given, displacement given at 1, what is the force at 2? Okay, so the same notation, same meaning is followed here, but compared to 
x by 2 like that. So if I calculate this as minus 6 by 2 square plus 6 by 3 square. So that, that gives me minus 0.83. So I'll write it in the k12 minus 0.83. Now, what is k13? See, k13 is displacement here. So if this goes down, this has to go up. So this is my k13. What is my k13? Going up. That, that up is up against the direction of the coordinate. So third coordinate was downward, but k13 says to me that I should go up. So since of opposite nature, I get minus, what is the value? Minus 12ei by 3q, because that span, that 3 meter span is there. So from this, you get the value as minus 0.44. So I'll write it down, minus 0.44. K14. What is K14? See, what is this value should be equal to this value? Because in order to rotate the beam, it should have an equal couple, right? So this value is nothing but Again, the see the sign, it's in the same direction that 4 is. So it's 6 ei upon 3 square. So 6 by 3 square gives you 0.67. So all these are ei, 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 so I get 0.67. Again, I'm not repeating the entire matrix. I'm just taking above the diagonal. So I need this, 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 and these terms, right? So I'll do it for the second case, apply unit displacement at 2. apply unit displacement r2 so 2 is a moment so that should be actually rotation not displacement right so when you have this your uh, this end is rotated so just to show it I'm rotating the fixed end so this is this remains like this. Now you have k22 here. How the beam deflects? Deflects like this, deflects like this. So your k22 is 4ei upon 2 plus 4ei upon 3. So 4ei upon 2 plus 4ei upon 3. So what's the value here? 4 by 2 plus 4 by 3, that's 3.33. Now, what is k21? See, this joint is trying to come down, but actually it should not deflect, it should only rotate. If it has to be prevented, I should apply a force upward. Similarly, this joint, if it is to be prevented, I'm just raising this, if this joint has to be prevented to go up, I should put a force down. Now, what is this value? This upward is opposite to the direction of 1. So opposite direction will cause a negative sign. Minus 6 ei upon the span is 2 square and here plus 6 ei upon 3 square. So actually I did not need this value but uh, 6 by 3 square is minus 0.83 just to show you that the matrix is similar, uh, symmetric. See k21 that is this value is minus 0.83 which is similar to k12. So that's why I didn't need it, but I just to show you that the surface matrix is symmetric, whatever value we get here should be equal to this value. Then I need k23. So what is k23? If this is k22, by this value, see 3 is a displacement, so let me calculate k24 first. So k24, we know that if the far end is fixed, and a moment is applied at this end, the far end will have a carryover moment of by 2, C O M, that is carryover moment. So K24 will be equal to 1 by 2 of 4 E I upon 3. So you get 2 by 3. Right? So just let, let me write down the values again. So you have K22 as 3.33 and K24 as 2 by 3. Your last value that is left is this. Now, since this is downward, this should be upward. This point is downward, so this point should be upward. What is this value? K23 minus 6 EI by 3 square. So here minus 6 by 3 square gives you minus 0 0.67. So uh, these are the other three values. Let me just quickly find out the other three values also. 
So you have to apply a displacement at 3. When you apply a displacement at 3, your beam was like this, goes down and comes up. So just keep a load of the spans. It's 3 meter, 4 meter and this is 2 meter. So these are the values. If you have this downward K33. So what is your K33? Again 12 EI upon 3 cube plus 12 EI upon 4 cube. What else you need is K34, right? So K34 is actually a moment. So like this and like this. So you have direction like this. So minus 6 EI upon 3 square plus 6 3i by 4 square. So what are the values? It's 12 by 3 cube plus 12 by 4 cube. So you get 0.63 here and minus 6 by 3 square plus 6 by 4 square. You get minus 0.29. So this is 0 0.63 and minus 0 0.29. You are just left with one value. So you have, uh, I'm just calculating directly. I hope you got the hand of it now. So you have this and you have this. You apply a moment K44, it deflects like this and goes up like this. So what is your value here? Your value K44 will be equal to 4EI by L, right? When the far end is fixed and the rear end is given rotation, 4EI upon 3 plus 4EI upon 4. So your value is 4 by 4 plus 4 by 3, the value is 2.33. So this is 2.3. So this completes your stiffness matrix for this beam. The next class we will see a stiffness matrix for a frame.